What's up everybody? I'm out here at FCA camp for a very special interview with a very special young man uh, for any intermissions. Tell us who you are, dude. My name is Ryan Deering. I'm on staff with FCA here in the Treasure Valley for FCA Sports, specifically baseball, and I'm here to have a good time. And tell us where we are. We are at Northwest Nazarene University's baseball field. This is where I played three years of college ball after I played at CBC where I met this guy. Come on. All right, so you already kind of alluded a little bit. You played here, but let's back up to when you were just a little. Walk us through as fast as you can, in a sense, without missing some fun details, your baseball journey. I, so baseball journey, I'm a, I'm a lefty. So I didn't play over an outfield, maybe a little bit of first base. And I was always, I was, I was, I was scared of the ball. I didn't like, play, I didn't really like playing baseball. <laughs> and it came about, I forget what year it was. It was my, I want to say it was, it was still 60 foot bases. I think I was 10 years old, maybe. Uh, I came home one day, I was balling. I was like, mom, dad, I'm done. I don't want to do it just because I was scared of the ball. Yeah, that was yeah. the only reason I was scared of the ball. And I, it was actually my mom, not even my dad. My mom comes out, no, we'll give it one more year, one more year, and if you still don't like it, good. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly what happened. It was I was 11. I mean, yeah. Statistics don't matter, don't matter at all at that point. But I had I remember hitting a ton of triples. Yeah. And I had a ton of fun. I was like, okay, yeah, let's keep going. And then from there, was blessed to play on some good baseball teams. Um, got to high school. I actually got cut from varsity my junior year of high school. Okay. Um, what were they thinking? <laughs> I, I had a bad summer. I had a bad summer, and uh, coming to try out, it was okay. You know, I wasn't good enough. And, so I was one of two juniors that didn't get to play on varsity. Everybody else was on varsity. Yeah. Um, and then I got to play on varsity the next year, and I got through that suit summer ball. I met Brent Wyatt. Yes. Uh, coach at CBC. And Come on. He offered me a spot at, at CBC. Where I actually, I, I he offered me in the fall uh -huh. of my senior year, yeah. and I told him no. I turned it down. Come back after spring, and I was like, nobody ever turns down Brent Wyatt. I know. He had, he I know. Mad at You're you. watching. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then come spring, uh, after I got done, I was like, I, I don't want to be done. I want to keep going. And yeah. Called him up, and unfortunately, I lost the scholarship he offered me, but I was still able to play. Um, and then through there, I got to summer baseball, and God just took me on an amazing journey with who I met and yeah. where I played. And um, I actually got to meet somebody that played here when he talked to the coach about me, and I got offered a scholarship here. It's a private school, so a yeah. little more expensive. And yeah, yeah. I actually ended up saying no yeah. uh, because it was too much money. Yeah. And I told coach uh, Joe Schaefer here I said sorry I, I can't do it it's too much and yeah. he's all right he gave me one week to make the decision another week I said sorry no five weeks go by he reaches out to me and said hey we're gonna raise your scholarship 40 percent well, that's, that's huge and I had never I neither none of the coaches had ever watched me play baseball yeah it was all word of mouth yeah he comes back after 40 percent I come here wow. and three years we ended up going to a world series 2021 ended up six in the nation some people say fifth but I give it six <laughs> uh, and he's had a blessed career here yeah was this turf when you were here? First year, no. It wasn't. And then in the fall of 2020, uh, we got to go play over at, uh, I don't know, I don't remember the years, but we had to go play at the high school field where they're doing this in the springtime. It was all yeah. ready to go. I mean, this is beautiful. Too. Beautiful. I prefer dirt and, dirt and grass, but yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Well, of all that baseball you play, maybe share a, a favorite memory that's happened in the dugout, in the locker room, or it doesn't matter how old it was. What's your favorite baseball memory? I got two. Um, one of them was our the triple. Yeah. Um, we get so I'm gonna going into playoffs the year with the World Series. I was I was leadoff center fielder. I had a really good year going into playoffs. I think I was batting 426, yeah. something like that. Leading the second league in runs, leading in stolen bases, yeah. like just crushing it. Um, getting to playoffs, my batting average dropped from 426 to 331. Okay. Just did terrible. Not yeah. not good. I was yeah. in a, I put way too much pressure on myself. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, get into the World Series, get in the first game, uh -huh. not a good game. And I remember uh, ESPN reporter tweeted out, said, he didn't say my name, but he said, NNU needs to make a switch to the leadoff position. No way. It's like, oh, dagger and twist right there. So we got to find that reporter. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming for him. And I actually, him. that next game, I actually got bumped to the ninth spot. That's okay. my second leadoff batter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember, I didn't know this yet, but I remember going in, I'm just thinking like, what the heck is going on? I'm just doing so bad. Yeah. And it wasn't your Christmas song, but a uh, song of Roots by Imagine Dragons came on. It talks about going back to your roots. Ooh. And I remember my roots, and that's Jesus. Come on, dude. And I just remember not caring at all that I was doing terrible. Didn't care that I was on one of the big, the biggest stage in all of D2 baseball. And I didn't care. Yeah. And I went out, and I, a, I had an okay first three plate appearances. I think I lined out hard ground up quality at bats. High yeah. quality at bats. There you go. Had a walk, and then my, I had a 
we were tied two to two against another Nazarene team. Yeah. It was fun, fun dynamic there. Um, seventh inning, we're tied two to two, I think it was. And we ended up scoring seven runs that inning. Wow. And I hit, and in that inning, I was at the bat, first pitch, triple, got to the wall, I get there, and I just, I was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> just fired up. In that Come moment, on. it was like, man, like, this is, this is what, this is fun. Back to that, the triples. Back to the back to the roots. Back to the roots. This, there you that's go. what it's about. And that there's that, and then also rewind a little bit to get us to the World Series. Yeah. Uh, on this field, we got to host a regional tournament. That was COVID year. Oh, that's awesome. Or it was the, it was the year after COVID. It's all year, no fans, no, not a single fan in the okay. crowd. And then we that was GNAC rules. Okay. Get to NCAA rules in the regional tournament. Any fans can come. Yeah. This this stadium was about 350 people. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with a friend. They stuck. They. Got 350, yeah. and they let everybody else in for free. They counted an extra 100. Oh, nice! And there was like 500. Yeah, a lot of people in this man. place. Yeah, um, that's fun to play for. Oh, it was it was incredible. And I, I, we, long story short, we're down, bottom of the ninth, five to two, uh -huh. two outs. Yeah, nobody on base, two strikes. Chopper down the first base side, base hit. Next guy, two strikes. Yeah, chopper up the middle, base hit. Runs yeah. on first and second. Next guy, three run off of bottom. Come on now. Tie the game. Next guy gets pegged. Next guy, two run apple bomb over the, over the light pole. That's a good memory. And so it was just nuts. Yeah. And we had to beat this team twice because yeah. they, they upset us in game one. Oh, okay. It wasn't supposed to happen. Came back, we beat them that game the next day. I'll never forget this too. Walking through the locker room or the, the uh, gym in here, they were hitting in the cages. You can hear it being dropped. Yeah. From that moment, we didn't get on the field yet. knew the game was over. We won. That's awesome. And I let off. I walked, stole second, ground ball on the throw to first. I got aggressive, took home. Let's go. Two bag Fired approach, up. dude. It Talk about that. Two, two bag, bag approach. approach. Come oh, on. What I, what I tell you, what's your job when you get on base? <laughs> get the third, baby. Score. Yeah, so that's the true. Score. score yeah. Your job's to score. Best that's way true. to do that is get to the next one and the yeah. next one from there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the coolest moment, we ended up winning that game that's we're good for the World Series. Yeah. We're out on the mound right here. We're all huddled up, cheering on each other. Some of us crying. Yeah. I'm tough. I don't cry. <laughs> uh, um, and I'll never forget our pitching coach. Coach said, hey, turn around, thank the fans. And I turn around, not a single person had left. Oh, that's awesome. All, I mean, obviously maybe a couple did, but all 500 people yeah. just sitting there cheering yeah. us on, supporting us. And that moment was like, it is way bigger than That's baseball. That's super special. It's the community, it's the relationships, it's the fellowship. Yeah, come on. Well, let's talk about fellowship. Right? <laughs> so fellowship of Christian athletes. Uh, you're on staff with them. Um, you're up here in this area doing your thing, um, specifically a lot with FCA baseball, yes, sir. which I would love for you to share what is FCA baseball and what difference is FCA baseball compared to other programs? Yeah, F FCA baseball is a change in the community. Mm -hmm. um, for, I, for the ones that are involved in baseball, they, they can see it's it's progressing in, a, in not a great way. Compared to how I played it, how you played it, yeah. it's, it's different, it's changing. Um, and I'm not one to have the, I'm not one to judge like, oh, it's it's bad and he's just not whatever. Yeah. I'm not I'm not the overall judge, yeah. but yeah. the highest play is just different. And what, we're, what we get to do with FCA baseball is one, it's basically a huddle. What we have going on campus right now, we have a bunch of huddles walking around. Same thing with baseball practices. We'll, we charge our coaches with one, not charge them, but we have them do one, lead one devotional week yeah. for all the players. Yeah. Um, minimum. Yeah. I do it every every day. Yeah. Some other coaches do it every day. Yeah. Game time, FCA competitors creed. We go through that awesome. every game day. Um, and then what's super cool is we get the opportunity actually to pray after games yeah. with teams. Whether we get smoked, they get smoked, or a good game. Yeah. Um, hey, coach. Well, I'll offer you an opportunity to pray, which might which would you like to join us? That's awesome. And I would say it's 90% say yeah. Dude, that's say so yes. cool. I was, so, I was we, actually wondering about that. I'm glad you said that. We circle around home yeah. play, and we just get to pray. And yeah. we thank Jesus for dying on the cross for us yeah. and giving us the opportunity to be out on this field and play the game that we love. That's amazing. And I'm at the point, we've, we've, this is our fourth year with teams now. We're up to eight baseball teams and six softball teams. And it's to the point now, I'll get to a home plate meeting. The coach, you don't even say a word, don't even introduce them. Hey, we want to play with you after the game. That's awesome. And that, that's the impact it's having. Absolutely. You, you, we are starting to see change in the atmosphere of baseball. Because mm -hmm. on top of getting to minister to these kids, the kids are the priority. The next generation is the most important generation. Yep. Whether we like it or not, they're the leaders of the yep. next generation. Yep. Yep. And so with that, we get to, we get to minister to this, yep. and we get to see these parents buy in. Yeah. Buy in and sell out. For sure. Um, and there's conversations that need to have, and that's just, that's just part of it. And that's yeah. part of the ministry that we do. Yep. Um, but even even then, you just you start to see a change. Yeah. And I, somebody somebody mentioned that you have to have in order to have a true impact on the community, you have to have twenty percent 
of, of who you are in the community. And I disagree because I did the math. Uh -huh. Our FCA teams in the, in the Treasure Valley here, baseball and softball, were anywhere from 11.5 to 16.2 percent of the community. Okay. And you're seeing a change. Come on now. Because it's and that's, that's it's, Jesus. It is. It's Jesus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's bigger than us. We can't yeah. do that. No. It is. My testimony. I I didn't know what I was doing. All of a sudden, God just went. Yeah. You're mine now, buddy. Yep. 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 <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, hey, obviously you work with different all different ages of coaching, um, so you see it all. <laughs> the good, the bad, yes. and the ugly. Yes. Um, what advice could would you have for just a young athlete? Does that be a baseball player, right? Just give us some um, wisdom on you, what you would leave with them. Yeah. That they're, you've learned. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many coaches you played with. I played for dozens of coaches, mm -hmm. and. The reality is you can have your favorite coach, you can have your best coach, you have a coach you hate and the worst coach. The reality is your greatest coach is gonna be yourself. Come on. And that I mean I got to I learned how to swing a baseball bat, how to throw a ball, how to catch a ball. Obviously through coaches, yeah. but I, get, I was able to perfect the craft by watching myself, watching the professionals. I, I was initially not a fan of the time clock. Yeah. In professional baseball, it yeah, changed yeah. the game so much. I love it. But it's increased the tempo. Yes, I love and there, it. It's no longer that obviously they've earned their right to be a little lazy. Yeah, absolutely. But that being said, you're starting to see a little more what it actually looks like to play baseball. Because yes. they, they, I guarantee you, talk to every single one of them. Yeah. Every single one of them had to go through this. Had oh. to go through high school football, where they're winding out. I had a yeah. tryout one year, where tryout, not a practice, where yeah. we conditioned for two hours because one kid forgot a belt, and that that's that's where. It, that's what it stems from hard work. That's yeah. why I love baseball. You, you fail seven out of ten times, you're in the whole thing. Yeah, I mean. I, you know, my favorite baseball quote of all time. You fail, uh, I'm sorry. Um, baseball is 90% mental, and the other half is physical. Yeah, you know, so Yogi Berra, I think. Exactly. Said that's that's, that's, that's what I said. I meant to, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's that, that's what the game demands. And not only that, what I love about that, you take out the word baseball for life. It's what life demands. It is. You, Life is 90% mental, the other half is physical. Yeah, come on. And so all that to be said, find ways to grow yourself. Find ways to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Find ways to get uncomfortable so you can come comfortable come in those on. moments. Yeah. That's the greatest advice I can give. That's amazing, man. Well, hey, dude, it's been so fun getting to be a co-worker with you. Um, I go back to when we competed against you when you were at Kamaikin, now with the Chiawana, and then getting to just be around you a little bit in college for that one year. Um, but my most favorite thing about you is your character and your love for Jesus. And so I just want to say thank you on the behalf of the Treasure Valley. Uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Uh, I'm just so proud of you, dude. And uh, you're gonna, you're already an incredible man. But uh, thank you for the coach that you are, the leader that you are, and keep going, dude. All right. Appreciate you. Don't stop. You. We need, we need more people like you. Appreciate you. All right, man. You're off the hot seat. Thanks for doing this, dude. Love you, man. Love you too. All right.